embassy compound in Syria after a suspected bombing by Israeli warplanes on Monday. Tehran said the strike killed seven military advisors, including three senior commanders. Okay, so to put all this in context, this is basically the equivalent of some enemy of the United States, they are many, bombing the American embassy in Berlin, Germany, and killing several American generals. That's essentially what this was. So if there's one word that could be used to sum up Israel and its behavior on the international uh, scale, it's hubris. These people actually think that they can do whatever they want and not be held to account for it. They think that they can just fucking kill over 30,000 civilians, uh, attack countries that they are not at war with, and do whatever the fuck they want because Big Uncle Sugar is going to support them. And Biden literally came out and said that he is not going to support with American military might a retaliation for this retaliation. Israel's chickens came in, came home to roost today. And it was a glorious day. It was an extremely glorious day. Everybody was happy. Even the poor and bots on Twitter were happy. Why is everybody happy? Because this is, again, a demonstration. Do I support the currently existing government in Iran and the way that they do things internally? No, but that doesn't matter. I'm an American. And most importantly, I'm a black American. So when my people's enemies, when the people who have made my life a living hell, made my ancestors' life a living hell, and the people that they support, and the people who make other people's lives around the world living hells, when they get their comeuppance, it's a glorious day for the oppressed people of the world. Am I implying that I am as oppressed as the average Palestinian? No. But we are still comrades, brothers and sisters in arms because we have a common enemy, the United States. I heard about this and I was ecstatic. Zionists getting fucked over always puts a smile on my face. There's very little to smile about these days. But this, this shows the power of the people continues to be greater than the technology of our enemies. The target. So this is literally what triggered all of this. This is this is why Iran is beefing with Israel right now. Like this is why the cruise missiles and the drones were sent out because you cannot just kill another country's citizens, never mind military officials, and expect to not have any any payback, any pushback, any retaliation. That's not going to happen because a country that allows that to happen to its own citizens, cough cough U.S. Like, has there been any retaliation for the murder of aid workers, for the shooting of a Palestinian teenager in the West Bank, for the murder of Rachel Corey? No. That's why people think that America is a fucking punk. Like, it talks all this big shit. And it definitely has, like, it definitely has a bite. But when it comes to its own oppressed citizens, it doesn't give a fuck. If this country was true to its word... George Floyd would still be alive. If this country was true to its word, Malcolm X would still be alive. Emmett Till would still be alive. So fuck America and fuck Israel. According to Iranian state media, was top Revolutionary Guards commander Mohammad Reza Zahedi. He had been a senior commander in Iran's elite Quds force. The Corps' overseas arm, according to the guards. Iran's ambassador to Syria, Hossein Akbari, said Tehran's response would be harsh. Syria's foreign minister condemned the attack. Its state media cited a military source saying Israel launched the attack from the occupied Golan Heights and that its air defense system shot down some of the missiles. Yeah, I got to apologize for what I said last week, that Syria, would, Syria wasn't going to do shit. No. I mean, Syria has its own internal contradictions. It has its own internal problems. This is why Mao said no investigation, no right to speak. But yeah, that's what triggered all this. So the international community, meaning a bunch of pissed off as settler colonists and uh, Europeans are hand-wringing and molding about this. 
Well, there's been a strong reaction from leaders abroad and the region. The EU's foreign policy chief, Josep Borrell, released the... Who, who gives a shit what the EU has to say? The Honkoid Union. ...following statement on X. He said the EU strongly condemns the unacceptable Iranian... How is it unacceptable? Did you condemn the Israeli strike on the Iranian consulate in Damascus that launched all of this? Like, why should Iran just be expected to punk out and be like, oh, yeah, that was, that was bad, but, hey, uh, I'm... We're not going to do anything. No. No. Why would you do this to a country whose national symbol is literally a lion? <laughs> ...attack against Israel. This is an unprecedented escalation and a grave threat to regional security. Israel is a grave threat to regional security. I hate fucking... I hate diplomats. They're always so mealy-mouthed, and they don't get to the root. They never get to the crux of the matter. I mean, I guess that's partly their job, to just be masters and obfuscating bullshit, but it pisses me off. I'd make a horrible diplomat. I'd probably start a war every week. Well, the UK has been a firm supporter of Israel. The British Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, has reacted by saying, I condemn in the strongest terms the Iranian regime's attack against Israel. Iran has once again demonstrated that it's intent on sowing chaos in its own what the fuck are you talking about? Why would somebody sow chaos in their own backyard? Okay, so he acknowledges that Iran is a regional power in the Middle East. But uh, why are none of these people saying that this is literally all Israel's fault? This is all Israel's fault. Iran has done nothing. Nothing. This is a retaliation for the murder, the unwarranted, illegal murder of Iranian citizens. Of course they're going to retaliate. Backyard. The UK will continue to stand up for Israel's security and for all our regional partners, including Jordan and Iraq. Jordan actually, like, opened their airspace to the Israelis. And it was Jordanian pilots, if I recall correctly, that shot down quite a few of the drones. Yeah, they're the Uncle Toms of the Middle East, along with the Saudis. Alongside our allies, we're urgently working to stabilize the situation and prevent further... When has the UK ever stabilized anything? You don't call a Brit to stabilize something. You call a Brit to destabilize things. Escalation. No one wants to see more bloodshed. Israel does. Well, Ali Khamenei, Iran's supreme leader, has issued a video statement on X. He says the malicious Zionist regime will be punished. Attacking our consulate is like attacking our soil. The malicious It actually is attacking Iranian soil. Like, embassies and consulates, those are literally the soil of the country uh, to which they belong. So, like, the, I go to the Japanese embassy in Washington, D.C. I'm on Japanese soil. I go to the British embassy, I'm on British soil. Yeah, it is literally attacking Iranian soil. It might as well have been in Tehran. The regime has made a wrong move in this case. All right, let's bring in David Darosh. He's an associate professor at the National Defense University. He joins us live from Washington. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, two bald guys, not three bald guys, because I'm bald too. That's why I wear this hat. Not that I'm ashamed of my baldness. I just don't want to blind you guys. R.I.P. Mohammad Reza Zahedi. This is what Israeli public opinion is saying. What can't be said? Israel has been defeated, a total defeat. The war's aims won't be achieved. The hostages won't be returned through military pressure. Security won't be restored, and Israel's international ostracism won't end. We've lost. Truth must be told. The inability to admit it encapsulates everything you need to know about Israel's individual and mass psychology. There's a clear, sharp, predictable reality that we should begin to fathom, to process, to understand, and to draw conclusions from for the future. It's no fun to admit that we've lost, so we lie to ourselves. Very good. This is probably the wisest man in Israel. Now, destroy your own country. Bernie Sanders is a fucking coward. Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, I understand why people came to the left through this guy. But, like, I am... Every time I see shit like this, I am always forever grateful that it was Malcolm. That it was Huey that it was Asada, that it was like black revolutionaries who brought me into the left. Because like, I, I, I can't imagine like going through life, 
having to acknowledge that this guy is responsible for you being where you are. Of course, what really matters is that you are here, but generally everybody who came to left-wing politics through Bernie has something lacking, has something missing in their analysis, usually on the international scale. They're still soft imperialists because of shit like this. Okay, one second. So, excuse me, miss. I know I have four kids. I get disrupted all the time. All right, but let's let's have... So he starts off by infantilizing the demonstrators. Okay. Senator Sanders, last week the United Nations Human Rights Council passed an arms embargo resolution on Israel over its use of starvation as a weapon of war and its targeting of hospitals, schools, water, electricity, and shelter. Do you support this resolution and will you introduce a sanctions bill on Israel? Basically, will you do your job? Will you earn your progressive, dare I say, democratic socialist tag? Uh, disrupting, I know it's clever. Why don't you ask me? Senator Sanders, thank you for this talk. I Would you agree with your colleague and our own Senator Elizabeth Warren that the United States is complicit in genocide against the Palestinian people? So are you to the left of Liz Warren? Okay, so I don't want Sophie, to be interrupted now. Yeah. There's 700, okay. health 700 workers, 700 healthcare workers have been killed by Israel. Will you support health care for all, for all Palestinians? So he's playing on like uh, the Medicare for all thing that Bernie pushes. And let's see what he has to say. Thank you all very much. <laughs> Senator Sanders left the stage before the moderator could close the event and quickly ran out the back door. Look at this. It's fucking like pathetic. Like, why are you still upholding this guy who's going to be dead very soon, probably, as the face of socialism in the United States? It just shows how, like, how right wing this guy is. Like, in Europe, in Africa, in Latin America, Bernie would not be a leftist. He would be a center rightist. Okay. Like, more for Americans is not leftism, it's not liberate humanity. Palestine is the central question right now. If you do not stand for Palestine, and their innate right to armed resistance, to the right to reconquer their land, you are no leftist. You are no socialist. You are no communist. You are a social fascist, like Bernie. Do I despise the man? No, but that's an apt description of his politics. My support of people in struggle is unconditional. You eradicate your enemies. You win back your land by any means necessary. The only people whose opinions matter in the final analysis are the people that you fight for. What Bernie Sanders thinks doesn't matter. What AOC thinks doesn't matter. Only what the people who you are fighting for thinks matters. Didn't I once say that Bernie was like a cool inner city teacher? Yeah, that doesn't mean that I want him in the United States Senate. Well, I guess there could be far worse in the United States Senate, but <clears throat> me saying that Bernie is like a cool inner city teacher, it doesn't necessarily mean that he has the best politics. <laughs> How dare you try to fucking use my words against me, you little shit. <laughs> womp womp. Let's watch it again. Have I heard of the November 8th publishing house? I have not. Why do you all think that I have, that I've heard of everything? Like, I, I get that I have a big head, but it can only hold so much information. Hey. If he lives, I bet you he'll be on a fucking, the first thing smoking out of Israel and back to Brooklyn. Just a reminder, on October 7th, all Israelis in Kibbutz Be'eri were killed by Israeli police in the IDF. That included two twins who were children. Biden told Netanyahu that the United States won't support an Israeli counter attack on Iran. <laughs> so they're leaving you in the lurch like America always does. They're like counting on American support for whatever stupidity that they do. But I, I'm pretty sure that Genocide Joe, I mean, he already has the moniker Genocide Joe. I don't think he wants the moniker World War III Joe. Smoking shisha on the rooftop in Palestine waiting for the next Iranian drones to hit. This is like a fucking party. It's like a fucking party to the Palestinian people. They've earned the right to a party. 
you guys know that like Stalin is my least favorite of the heads of Marxism, Leninism, Maoism, right? This is part of why. So this is from um, uh, Dominic Lucero's book that I'm reading. It's in my bio. Uh, Stalin, History and Critique of a Black Legend. It's very fascinating so far. I highly recommend it. Um, it's the first English translation. Well, the first official English translation. So when Stalin was wrong, he was wrong, wrong. But uh, this is an excerpt. Above all, these were the years when the USSR strongly supported Zionism and the creation of Israel. Stalin played a prominent and perhaps even decisive role. Without him, the Jewish state would not have seen the light of day in Palestine, so goes a Russian historian, making use of recently declassified documents in his country. Andrei Gromyko, the Soviet foreign minister, was uh, made to deliver a speech in May 1948 that was almost textbook Zionist propaganda. In the post-war period, Stalin followed a fundamentally pro-Jewish Palestinian policy. Military aid in 1945 was given to the Zionist movement through Yugoslavia with Soviet support. And then three years later, uh, during the Nakba, the forced removal of tens of thousands of Palestinian people, hundreds of thousands, if I recall correctly, of Palestinian people from their, uh, from their homes, um, the militias and soldiers that were doing this had arms that were received with the cooperation of Czechoslovakia. The Soviet Union supplied Israel with arms in violation of the U.S. Security Council Resolution of March 29, 1948. It also organized the migration of young Jewish people from Eastern Europe, and this went on to strengthen the army of the Jewish state in its war with the surrounding Arab countries. Also, the Israeli Air Force that is currently bombing Palestine was founded on Czech territory, a supposed socialist country, harbored the Israeli Air Force. Of course, we can always be generous to say that Stalin did not know that the that Israel was going to like go to piss like it did, but like I'm pretty sure he had heard of the Nakba. I'm pretty sure he was uh, was very in tune with the with the Zionist press. Okay, so Stalin was not a stupid man. Stalin also did not mince words. He was a very blunt man. So, in a way, a lot of the shit that's happening in Israel right now can be attributed to the intervention and support that the country received in its cradle from the Soviet Union. Iran launched a large-scale drone and missile attack against Israel, which triggered air raid sirens across Israel early on Sunday. Israel is planning to launch a significant response to the Iranian aerial attack, media reports. Honestly, why don't you just take the fucking L? Like, they're going to hit you back. If you hit them back, then they're going to hit you back. Then you're going to hit them back. Then it's going to be it's gonna be on and on and on, okay? I don't want to be blown the fuck up. I don't want to be blown the fuck up. Of course, the president has already said that he's not going to support you all. But, like, just let it go. You got your lick in. They got theirs in. Just be like, you know what? Fuck it. That's what Biden wants him to do. But Netanyahu doesn't seem to know where his bread is buttered. So, interesting developments. This is from a book called uh, Revolution in the Air by Max Elbaum. It's basically a history of the new communist movement and the movements of the 60s and 70s in the United States. So this just talks about how like stupid the Chinese position was during the 70s in opposition to the Soviet Union, which it saw as the number one threat. So um, I'm going to read. Even more disturbing was China's reaction to the CIA-backed coup in Chile. While progressive governments throughout the world condemned the coup and tried to isolate the new Pinochet regime, China, Mao is still alive, by the way. This is during the Cultural Revolution. Granted, it wasn't during the peak of the Cultural Revolution because Mao had sent the most unruly Red Guards to the countryside like it was in 1967. But uh, the Cultural Revolution really didn't end until like 1960, 1966, 1976, 1977. So during what... I personally believe was the closest that humanity has ever come to communism in China. You had this shit going on. China was among the first countries to recognize the Pinochet regime. And it also was the only country in the UN besides the US to abstain from voting for a resolution to aid Chilean refugees. 
Beijing established warm relations with Pinochet, the guy who literally kicked communists out of helicopters, and his generals and hosted an official Chilean delegation on the second anniversary of the coup. Yes, Reitus did control the foreign ministry. Also, in 1973, China cut off aid to the liberation movement and Oman. They also cut off aid to the, uh, to the NPA, the Filipino Maoists, which had been fighting that country's feudal regime and its main backer, the Shah of Iran. Simultaneously, Beijing began to refer to the Shah's CIA-backed government as a bulwark against the USSR and expressed enthusiasm for the Shah's massive purchases of U.S. arms. Elsewhere in the Middle East, China hailed Egypt's 1972 expulsion of Soviet military advisors and its turn towards alliance with the U.S. It remained silent about attacks on the Palestinian movement, and it praised attempts by reactionary Arab governments like Jordan to impose restrictions on Palestinians. Then, in 1974, China sided with the pro-Western Portuguese Socialist Party against the left following the Carnation Revolution, the April overthrow of the fascist regime in Portugal. The Socialist Party was forthright about its goal of keeping Portugal in NATO and preventing social transformation within the country. To its left stood a broad alliance of trade unions, radicalized sections of the armed forces movement, the Portuguese Communist Party, and several smaller Marxist organizations. At first, the left held substantial initiative, but it lost ground when the Socialist Party leader Mario Suarez declared martial law in November of 75. China backed the Suarez crackdown on the grounds that the Portuguese Communist Party was an agent of Soviet social imperialism and constituted the main danger to the country. Beijing also began to argue for strengthening NATO, which was no longer characterized as a military alliance serving U.S. imperialism, but as a bulwark of European defense against the USSR. Opportunism, not even once. Today we'll go down in history as the turning point in Israel's last days. The axis of resistance is proving that even with billions of military tech, the army of occupation and genocide is not invincible. Israel is weak. Six months of armed resistance and mass mobilization have proved it. Do I think an Iranian land invasion of Israel, obviously in coordination with Syria, would be possible if the situation destabilizes further? I think that is very far-fetched. About 31 people were treated for anxiety or injuries they sustained while heading to a protected area when sirens sounded. <laughs> yeah, Israel literally counts anxiety attacks as military casualties. Soft-ass country. Keep in mind, a few months ago they were doing this shit, making fun of Palestinians who are uh, who were suffering because of them. And yeah, they count anxiety attacks as military casualties. This is from 2019. 38, no, 58 Israelis injured since 10 a.m. on Saturday. Between 10 a.m. Saturday and 1.30 a.m. Sunday, Magan David Adom treated 58 people for injuries, including three injured from rocket fragments, 10 injured while running for shelter, what did he do, fucking roll an ankle, and 45 suffering from anxiety. What a neurotic fucking country. Do you want kids? I want kids. 48.3% of 830 people said that they don't want kids, but I want kids. My bloodline must continue. And before you're like, but BRG, you're gay. Yeah, something called, uh, there's a lot of ways for gay people to have kids. Surrogacy, all sorts of stuff. Certainly not good at the section of the org that wants DSA to be smaller is trying to lay the groundwork for severing the org's connection to our most prominent elected official, anti-democratically spiraling the org in irrelevance. Okay, so anti-Nate Silver. What a funny that's funny ass name. Right, it's always had the funniest name. So, first of all, like, why are we proffering AOC as the most prominent elected official in DSA. Like, she's a member of Congress. We also have Cori Bush. We have 
Rashida Tlaib, we've got Elon Omar, like we've got other people. Like, why are you, why are you so fixated on her? Like she's the most rightest of our elected officials, definitely with a national profile. But I don't know, as a St. Louis, and I would personally be better with Cori Bush being promoted as our most prominent elected official. She's not like uh, ALC's rightism is a liability. She literally got mogged. She got chased out of a fucking theater by Larushites because of her piss poor position on Palestine. And like in 40 years, she's going to be the Boricua Nancy Pelosi. So fuck AOC. History is being written with missiles and blood and bullets. And people are talking about fucking AOC. Fuck AOC. <laughs> if not now, this is like a liberal Zionist organization, but it proffers itself as friends to the Palestinian people. And they said this today. Two is authoritarian governments are putting millions of people in harm's way. Further escalation only serves these warmongering, corrupt politicians' interests. We urge Israel, Iran, and all parties, on Twitter, mind you. Yes, I'm pretty sure that the Iranian government is going to make decisions, military and foreign policy decisions, based on a bunch of fucking hipsters in the United States. We urge Israel, Iran, and all parties to de-escalate now before this escalates into a broader regional war. Go fuck yourselves. This is why a majority of actual anti-Zionists don't like or trust, if not now. You pretend to want Palestinian liberation, but you tremble at the idea of the occupation being brought to its knees. Like these people are basically white leftists, white liberals rather, during the civil rights movement that thought that Malcolm, that they were scared shitless of Malcolm, but they loved MLK. Well, they loved their fantasized notion of MLK, and they tried to meddle in the black liberation movement. You can't do that. If you're an ally, ally is a military term. I keep saying this. If you're an ally, be an all the way ally. Unconditionally support the liberation of oppressed people through armed force. That's the only way you realize liberation. You discreetly are Zionists and you reveal yourselves one way or another. The death of the occupation takes priority over everything else, including the feelings of some soft Zionist hipsters in the United States. People who say that black Americans have the biggest victim complex in the world have never met an Israeli. Case in point, this is from the IDF. Proxy. Keep in mind that these people have been fighting civilians. Murdering civilians have killed over 30,000 people. Like We will never have a full-scale account of the death toll because in many cases, people have literally been vaporized into fucking nothing. So 200,000 people could be fucking dead. We will never know. This is the IDF. The organization that is responsible for pretty much all of the bloodshed in this conflict, this is what they said. Iran fired hundreds of the most powerful missiles and drones directly at millions of Israelis. Iran has been attacking Israel for the past 45 years. No, the fuck, bruh. Y'all literally traded weapons to them. Y'all literally sold weapons to them in the 80s. They were your buddies by ordering its vast proxy network to do it for them. Iran used to hide their terrorism behind other terrorists. This is no longer the case. Why haven't you all mentioned that you blew up their fucking embassy? Iran has come out of the shadows to expose their true face, the face of a radical and irrational regime. That You're talking about yourselves. You're talking about yourselves. Like a rational person would think, hmm, oh, if I blow up this country's embassy, they might bomb me. They might send missiles to me. They might be pissed off at me. Like Iran is probably the only person in this scenario that has exercised restraint. Like in response to October 7th, well actually fuck in response because they want to eradicate the Palestinian people. Israel has been bombing civilians nonstop since October for six months, half a year, tens of thousands of people dead, never going to come back. And you really think that people are not seeing this. You want to talk about proxies. You have APAC in the United States and you have people in fucking Germany. They literally broke up a Palestinian solidarity conference. It was literally a scene from Weimar, Germany, when stormtroopers came in and just beat the shit out of left-wing activists. Except this time, it was actual cops that broke up a Palestinian solidarity um, conference. 
a threat to nobody but those who commit evil acts. And this is, this is how they respond. It's shameless, really. Wants to end the entire free world, directly launching a coordinated attack with missiles and drones at Israeli civilians. They didn't aim at Israeli civilians. That's what you all do. This is projection. You think that everybody acts like you. They hit an Air Force base. They hit military bases. Israel literally builds military bases in residential areas. It's using its own people as human shields. Kind of like what they say that Hamas does. But no, Israel uses its own citizens as human shields. Never mind the Hannibal Directive, where they literally say that, oh yeah, if it takes the deaths of one of our soldiers or one of their citizens to stop evil big bad Hamas, then it's better they be dead than end up being taken hostage. This is a severely neurotic and fucked up country. Like never have I seen a people so eager to dance with their own deaths. From inside its own territory, this attack shows Iran's true colors. Yeah, true based colors. Tens of thousands of Palestinians are exposed to attacks by armed settler militias storming villages across the West Bank in recent hours. With scenes of homes and vehicles set on fire and the numbers of casualties rising, the Israeli army enables these attacks or even participates in them. This is five hours ago, by the way. This is what Israel has created in the West Bank, a reality of blood and revenge. A weekend which began with the aberrant killing of 14-year-old Benjamin Ahamir continues with more victims, including Jihad Afif Abu Aliyah from al mugayir and dozens of injured Palestinians while the entire region is engulfed in flames. Israel's occupation and apartheid regime have obligations, among them the obligation to protect all of its subjects. No settler colonial countries don't. Settler colonial countries don't even protect their own people. If they were cared so much about protecting their own people, they wouldn't expose their people to the rage of the colonized. But the Israeli government specializes in neglecting not only the lives of its own citizens held hostage in Gaza, but also of its subjects in the West Bank. We shouldn't consider Palestinians Israeli subjects, though. Like, the West Bank doesn't belong to Israel. How are they Israeli subjects? Here's old boy Mao. Like, people are constantly like, oh, you're just a warmonger. This is what Mao said about it. People all over the world are now discussing whether a third world war will break out. On this question, too, we must be mentally prepared and do some analysis. We stand firmly for peace and against war. However, if the imperialists insist on unleashing another war, we should not be afraid of it. Our attitude on this question is the same as our attitude towards any disturbance. First, we are against it. Second, we are not afraid of it. The First World War was followed by the birth of the Soviet Union with a population of 200 million people. The Second World War was followed by the emergence of the socialist camp with a combined population of 900 million people. If the imperialists insist on launching a Third World War, it is certain that several hundred million more will turn to socialism, and then there will not be much room left on Earth for the imperialists. It's also likely that the whole structure of imperialism will utterly collapse. So does this mean that communists are like warmongers, people that, oh yeah, fuck yeah, because our bodies are on the line? No. Like, I, if the missiles were over the United States, I would be saying the same fucking thing. You can only end war by fighting one. Times like this expose and purge the cowards from the communist movement. Iran also did another base thing. Starting this morning, all ships associated with the Zionist regime are prohibited from moving in the waters of the Oman Sea in the Persian Gulf, and if they do, they will be seized. From now, the Strait of Hormuz will be closed to the ships of the Zionist entity, and if they are seen, they will be arrested. Very good. Your cruise missile is on the way and will arrive between 10.30 and 11 o'clock p.m. This is from a Palestinian in Gaza. We thank Iran for this joy, which we have not heard since October 7th. Imagine China blowing up a U.S. embassy in Germany and killing a half dozen top U.S. generals. The U.S. would glass half the planet in retaliation. Settlers running to shelters after seeing the view in the sky. 
So this is how they keep hurting themselves. Look at them. They're all uh, mobbed up together. You've got people getting trampled. You've got people rolling their ankles. You've got people stepping on each other's feet. And of course you have the all, the all too predominant anxiety attacks. Why the fuck are you on threads? That's what you get for going on threads, listening to those idiots there. This is surreal. This is a Trump rally in Pennsylvania. She is our big problem. Holy shit, is that a black Targaryen? Look at her. She's got the cowboy hat and the silver hair. Is that a black Targaryen? These are maggots screaming. These are maggots screaming genocide, Joe. They're not quite a lot of people of color, trademark, in that audience. Biden should be very afraid. But yeah, uh, if you have in not now in your Palestine coalition, kick them out. That's from a member of the steering committee of the DSA International Committee, Comrade Myra. Very nice person. She has my sense of humor. Israeli Channel 12 confirmed that seven missiles hit the Ramon Air Base in the Negev Desert. That's an air base. That's a valid military target. It's not a hospital packed with starving children and old women or a residential neighborhood or a school. This is how soldiers behave. Soldiers fight only soldiers. Only cowards fight and attack uh, civilians. And no, settlers are not civilians. Settlers are valid military targets. Senator John Fetterman weighing in on the current situation. Hold on, 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 hold on. If I like, if I don't see you celebrating right now, you're you're really sus. You're suspicious to me. I like, why are you not celebrating? Why are you not engaging in spontaneous acts of joy and celebration alongside our Palestinian comrades? You think that you know more than them? Do you value the Do you value the lives of Israeli soldiers and settlers? What's your deal? Yes, I'm using peer pressure. I'm bullying you right now. You need to be celebrating alongside the Palestinian people. Your country is complicit in their death. The least you can do is celebrate Israel getting its comeuppance. You hear that? You hear that yelling and screaming and stuff? That's, those are shouts and screams of joy. Shouts and screams of joy that haven't been heard for six months because the enemy, the people who have been bombing them day in and day out are finally getting bombed themselves. No, I'm not going to go on blue sky. Why would I do that? It's kind of clunky and hard to use. Plus there's nobody on it. Stephen King says that sooner or later, these superstitious idiots arguing over religion are going to get us all killed. I strongly advise him to go out another walk and I hope he gets hit by a bus this time. This is Professor Rua Benjamin using her honorary degree address at Spelman, that notorious perfumed magnolia written campus of the black girl excellence bourgeoisie and training to denounce Atlanta's cop city, the ongoing genocide of Palestinians and the repression of student activists. Black faces in high places are not going to save us. Yes. I hate doing this, but this is what like this is what the radical liberals do. I guess clapping is too abrasive to their soft little ears. Just look at the black proponents of Cop City in Atlanta's leadership class. Miss leadership class. Black faces in high places are not going to save us. Just look at the black woman's hand, ambassador at the UN, voting against a ceasefire in Gaza. That is our... Did I see Hassan stream earlier? Bro, I got a job. Do you really think that I have time to sit down and watch other dudes talk about politics? I'm talking about politics right now. No, no, actually, I think I've mentioned this before, but like, I rarely watch other content creator stuff. I love Hassan. I love what he says on Twitter. And like, I watch like snippets of his stuff. But like, I don't just sit around and watch other people all day, man. I have a life. I have a job. I play video games sometimes. But I don't just sit around and consume, consume, consume content. 24-7. I make content for you to consume. But 
What else? The governor of New Jersey and the LAPD made tweets saying, we are monitoring the situation between Israel and Iran carefully. At this time, no threat exists to the people here. Like, is, what, 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 is, is Iran gonna, like, send missiles to fucking Los Angeles and New York City? Black how do I have a job and still have time to know how to be cool and right? It's called black excellence. Or bald excellence. Blackness and our womanness are not in themselves trustworthy. Yes. If we allow ourselves to be conscripted into positions of power that maintain the oppressive status quo. Yes. Our blackness and womanness are not themselves trustworthy if we support the occupation of black neighborhoods with so-called better trained police. Yes. Or remain silent about the genocide of oppressed peoples around the world funded yes. by our tax dollars. And here, let me please shout out the incredible Spelman students and AUC siblings who have been organizing with Stop Cop City and Justice in Palestine, among many other troublemakers in this room. You all remind us that college is not a waiting room to enter the real world, but that you can start transforming that world right here, right now. It goes without saying, but let me just say it anyway. For student activists speaking... Supreme Leader Khamenei, we must surrender. New Jersey has announced that they're, has announced that they're joining the war and they have loaded the Gabagool cannon. Speaking out courageously for Palestine and Congo and Haiti and to stop Cop City. They should not be threatened with expulsion, loss of scholarships. Yes. Or, or have public safety called on them for protesting yes to our that actually happened in my uh, city today oh uh, at washington university i'm going to try to have um some of the people that took part in it and who were arrested uh on sometime this week hopefully uh, i got a comrade who's linking me up with them but anyways um admitted students day at wash u there was a pretty big disruption and public safety came and arrested a bunch of students and alumni who were um because wash u is an investor in Boeing. Yeah, the manufacturer of various instruments of death and torture and other unpleasant things. Uh, Wash U's endowment, I believe, is invested in major part in Boeing. And this goes all the way back to the 60s. Like, um, divestment was a major reason why uh, apartheid South Africa couldn't stand for much longer because people started pulling their money out because of pressure campaigns like that for people who mattered. So BDS, it's a life. Often our institutions celebrate student activists after they've graduated. Or been expelled. This is cool. This is what black academia needs to be like. It needs to be like no more chasing a bag, get a bag, I'm gonna make these white folks pay me bullshit. It needs to be like Rick recognizing that those of us who are educated, those of us who have the privilege to go to university, we have a duty to our people and the people of the world to use what we learn there and use our time there productively. I didn't know Food Not Bombs opened up a restaurant. But yeah, if you can't understand the joy and excitement of the Palestinians who are celebrating Iranian missiles in the sky, flying towards their enemies, you are simply part of the problem. Here's a Palestinian saying that the Israeli settlement across my village has been hit. Allahu Akbar. Thank you, Iran. Palestinians across Hebron are in the streets cheering. Our enemies have been struck. Alhamdulillah. Palestinians in the West Bank are tearing down the apartheid wall. <laughs> this is the fall of the Berlin Wall, except good this time. <laughs> They're tearing it down and dragging it away. Hopefully they use it to make more rockets. Iran just hit the Israeli settlements across my village in Hebron. These settlers killed my cousin in 2017. For the first time, we have gotten our revenge. It's a statement from the Young Democratic Socialists of America, very based. The youth always lead the way, of course. On April 13, 2024, the Iranian government launched drones and missiles at Israel in response to Israel's bombing of the Iranian consulate in Damascus, Syria. 
The most rabid voices of the U.S.'s security apparatus will use this attack to justify further sanctions on Iran, sending more military aid to Israel, continuing to support the military actions of Israel, and potentially directly supporting the Israeli military action against Iran. Under no circumstance did the U.S. support any Israeli military action and allow this to escalate into the worst military crisis the region has seen for years. It is our responsibility to oppose any U.S. intervention which would escalate this crisis even further. Young Democratic Socialists of America calls for no more sanctions on the people of Iran, no more arms to the genocidal state of Israel, and, most importantly, no war with Iran. This is based, hopefully, the mainstream of DSA learns from these brave youth. So, they shot their shit, and then they said that Iran's mission to the United Nations announces the end of the Iranian military retaliation. So this is what we can do to you. Stop being stupid, basically. The photos of Iranian drones passing over Imam Hussein's shrine in Karbala towards Israel are a master act in martial showmanship and symbolism. They will be circulating in thousands of group chats and messaging channels. Even if nothing more happens now, Iran got what it needed. And at 5.13 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the White House called a lid, which means that President Biden will not make any public appearances for the rest of the day. Why? Because he needed his diaper and his batteries changed. So officials said that we should not expect to see the president for the rest of the day. But in short, chickens coming home the roost never made me sad. They always made me glad. Always got to quote Malcolm. Peace. Shoot a rocket at Israel.